All right. Um, obviously, a uh, couple days of prep here leading into the um, uh, leading into the Big Ten tournament. So um, I don't know if uh, you guys are as tired of hearing me talk as I am of talking. Um, hopefully, you are. Uh, but uh, but we've got some work to do ahead of us, and, and uh, obviously it's a it's, you know, it's going to be a difficult game. We know that. Uh, um, I don't think you expect anything other than a really difficult game when you go into these types of settings, whether it's this one or the NCAA tournament. Um, it's going to be a difficult going to be a difficult game, and uh, whoever it is we play, obviously Northwestern. Um, we know how capable and, and uh, good they are. Um, got very close at their place late. You guys all know that. Um, and then I don't have to review our struggles with Penn State. So um, we'll see which one. I, you know, it's hard, hard to tell, hard to anticipate who, who could win that game. I think they split throughout the season. Um, so it, I think it's going to be a, you know, I think it, it's going to be a really uh, close game in that one. So we're kind of preparing for uh, both teams as much as possible. How do you prepare for, for both teams? But after this, you have almost a two-week layoff. You said earlier this year you were going to reach out to people to see what you could do. Have you done that? And maybe what have you taken away from from those coaches and what you might, how you might handle the layoff in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I have not talked to. Um, I was. I've talked to Brad Stevens. I uh, talked to him yesterday about. Uh, uh, he actually called me, and we were talking about a few other things, and he mentioned. Um, uh, he gave me some good ideas and good thoughts from when they were in the Horizon League, and the tournament was around that time of year, or th this time of year, and, and what they did uh, in preparation. Because obviously I never worked for Brad, but um, so I did pick his brain on that and kind of get his thoughts. And he gave me some good ideas that you know I don't know they're like the difference between winning and losing, but um, gave me some good ideas for for moving forward. Veterans on this team, they haven't had a lot of success in this tournament. Just what's the vibe you, you feel from them this week and what their motivation level is like? Well, I, I'm sure they're going to be anxious to, to want to uh, play well. Um, uh, and really, that's all you can expect for. Obviously, you know, I was 0-3 in my time at Butler. Um, but two of those games, we, we okay, uh, two of those games we, uh, we played well. And I think that's really what you're trying to do is play well. And hopefully that you, you can do enough to, uh, to knock the door down uh, when you get a chance. And I, I, they're going to be really motivated to do that. They're excited about this. I think they're excited about what becomes after this, but their focus is on the Big Ten tournament right now. Um, do you get the sense uh, from teams that are already in the NCAA tournament when they get there to this thing, like most people believe your team and three others are already – in as opposed to maybe a Nebraska or yeah. somebody uh, who really needs this, do you get a sense uh, of a change? Have you been on either side of that, I guess? The change in their approach or mentality? Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's just probably some of that, Steve. Uh, last year, as a matter of fact, we finished uh, second in the, in the Big East and we played Xavier, who was, uh, as crazy as it sounds, finished uh, seventh uh, in, the, in the Big East. And they needed another quality win uh, to get in, most people thought. And uh, so there was certainly a level of urgency, I think on both of our ends, but uh, you could see it with them for sure, uh, because I think, you know, they were, they were right on that bubble. Now, I, you know, listen, I, I think Nebraska and Penn State are, are NCAA tournament teams. I, I, I'm not saying that because I'm trying to be a, what do they call it, shill for the league, or is that, is that what it is? Make sure I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not trying to do that at all. Um, I, I'm I'm being really honest. In you know, I've coached against bubble teams the past couple years. In my second year, we were kind of a bubble team at, at Butler, and and they're as good or better than any bubble team that we faced, Nebraska and Penn State. And I'm just I just I think. Listen, the metrics are what the metrics. They'll have to figure that out. They'll have to answer, you know. But uh, I'm, I'm hopeful, um, you know, that our league is well represented. It's, it's you know, we're certainly not going to be willing to, to give up a game, that's for sure. But um, I hope they're well represented. Let me ask you a lot of 
lot in the last couple of weeks about fatigue. But I wonder, <clears throat> looking back at these last couple of games, the way the schedule played out in those last five were all against teams that were playing you a second time. Did that impact some of the numbers and some of the some of the production that you saw in the teams? You were playing teams that had a very detailed scouting report from having already played you. Yeah, um, it, it might have, but um, I don't. I mean, we we had that too, right? Um, so I think I don't know that there's an advantage one way or the other. I, I do think that you know, our, our maybe our lack of depth on the scoring side of things. Um, it makes it maybe a little easier at times to take away some of potentially take away some of our strengths. Whereas if you have a little more depth across the board scoring, it's 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 harder to do that. Um, uh, so maybe that has played into it. But uh, um, you know, I don't know if there was a necessary advantage one way or the other. Um, you know, again, I think uh, we just did not play well against Penn State. Michigan game, we. Um, I thought played pretty well in stretches. <clears throat> they were just better than us on that day, clearly. I just wonder, because you've talked about how this team, ha you, know, you don't have a lar large margin for error. And when you're dealing with that, then when you come around a second time, if, yeah. if, if maybe that this team is more susceptible to a situation like that than maybe some other teams. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I think the deeper teams, um, at least the way we, f we have to prepare, the deeper teams, um, this time of year, they are a little more difficult to prepare for, the ones that have a little, little more balance, and we've tried to do that. But um, we don't have, you know, two or three guys necessarily coming off the bench that you say, okay, hey, listen, we got to know exactly uh, where those guys are at and what they can do. So hopefully um, we'll have some guys step up. I know we have some guys that are capable of that, but, uh, um, uh, you know, whether that plays a role or not, I'm not sure. Kurt, you guys obviously got a taste of it earlier in the season against Minnesota, but just from your time in the Big East, is there something different, something special about tournament time in New York City, in Madison Square Garden? Do you have to prepare your guys a little differently for it? Well, I don't, I don't know that we'll prepare them any different, but I do think that it's, um, you know, you just want to, you want to enjoy it, you want to have fun, and, and hopefully you can stay as long as, as um, um, you can possibly stay. But, um, you know, I... I don't think you, you know, we'll talk to them about it. Um, I do think there's a little bit of an, of an advantage when you can play, have a win under your belt there. Um, so we'll need to be ready from the jump because that team will have won a game and get, got a little bit of momentum uh, the night before. Um, so I think you got to be ready for that. But, uh, it's, you know, it's a great environment, great atmosphere. I, I have no idea what the ticket sales are going to be like or any of that kind of stuff. But our focus is on our team. But... You know, it's a fun venue, and it's, you know, it's New York City. I know that conference tournament success can be a little random, who's hot, who's not at the time, but you have a guy in Andrew who was at least a part of a team last year that made a run in this. Do you rely on him anymore for, like, I know there's no secrets to doing that, but just being a part of something like that, does he have more of a voice this week? Do you ask him to talk to the guys at all about what it took last year to do that? Yeah, you know, I don't know, Bill. We haven't, um, maybe we'll, uh, we might pick his brain a little bit, but, um, you know, I think that um, it was kind of a, it was a it was a great story for them last year. They, you know, when you go through something like they went through, um, your your perspective completely changes. So you're in this pressure cooker of uh, of of tournament play, and then your plane has a situation like it has. And we had the same thing uh, coming back from St. John's the year before, and. Here you're, you know, when we were at St. John's, we're on the plane and I'm cutting up the video with our operations guy, or video guy next to me. And, and I'm furious at how we played on a couple possessions against St. John's. And um, then the, the plane slams, not violently, but slams. And the oxygen mask come down and the light goes out and the, uh, uh, lady on the PA, um, in not the most calm voice, I might add, um, you know, urgently tells us to put the oxygen masks on. And, you know, it took me a couple of days before I picked that computer back up and started looking at the St. John's tape again. So you're, it's, you're kind of playing with house money. You're just playing loose. And, and I think that's probably what happened to them. Um, in a lot of ways, they were playing well, and that, that in some ways just kind of spurred them on. So, uh, you know, will I pick his brain on some of that? Maybe, but, um, you know, I don't know how much I will. 
mentioned the other day that some of the guys we'd expect were still kind of dealing with some heavy legs. A couple of days more practice. How have you seen them? How are they looking for? Well, we were off yesterday, um, which was which was was good for all of us, I think, because I'm I've been under the weather. A couple coaches have been under the weather, um, uh, but uh, we'll see today. You know how they how they feel. Um, we need to have a good hard win today, a good hard physical practice today, um, but. Um, you know, I, I think that it, it's been a little bit better. It's kind of hard to tell until we actually get into game action, but um, I just think uh, it's natural. And the guys that kind of the slighter build guys, um, uh, Kate and CJ have been the two that probably I've, I've noticed it the most that have needed some, some time away. In that same vein, when you were talking about Jashan and the Indiana game and how you had to call timeouts for him to just yeah. kind of move through. To, to get through that game for a guy like that. And I know he's bigger and stuff, but what does that say about, about him to kind of fight through that and, and be on the court? You know, some guys would check yeah. out, I imagine. Yeah, no, he's he's that kind of a kid. He is such a warrior and, um, you know, such a warrior. And, you know, there have been pockets of time. He, he's, he's had a consistent effort. You know, the thing we've said about J, JT throughout the year is, listen, he's, he's a good player whether he plays hard or not. But we, I really think the separator for him in terms of there's a lot of good players in this league. I mean, look at the all Big Ten and who got left off. There's so many good players in this league. But the separator for him is his motor and his energy and how hard he plays. And if he's just average in that area, then it's pretty noticeable because he's, he's you know, there's some areas in his game that he, he's, got, he's got to improve on. But when he's playing with motor, in high energy, he's. I think he's one of the very best players in the league, and that's what he's got to consistently be. And he's been that for most of the year, I believe. There have been a couple games where I don't think he's been that, but most of the year he's been that. Chris, when you look at the, the breaks that you're going to have, you have seven days between you know, your last game in the Big Ten tournament, then you'll have a minimum of ten days. So with that amount of breaks, how do you find the right blend of going after them in practice yeah, giving them the rest so that they are as sharp as possible when you play some of your most important games. Well, yeah, that's something we're gonna. I'm gonna dig into after you know after this uh, tournament gets over with, whenever that is. Spend some more time, but you know we'll we'll um, we'll have a plan in place where uh, we'll give guys ample time. Yet we'll also do a lot of live stuff in practice, <coughs> and we'll do some scrimmaging in practice, and some you know significant amounts of scrimmaging. Um, and where we'll even up the teams and do a lot of those kind of things. I, I mean, I think that's that's really our best chance of keeping guys sharp. And, and you know, I've never had this kind of a layoff. Uh, my third year at Gardner Webb, we, we we had a similar layoff, but it wasn't this long, and it was a it was a it was a different tournament, postseason tournament. Uh, so I, I don't know that I don't know what kind of factor it's going to have, but we are going to try to. Do everything we can to keep that balance of being sharp, and a lot of it's gonna. There's gonna be a lot of live, kind of game type action in practice to try to do that. Chris, your team sort of famously came into the season expected to finish 11th or 12th in the Big Ten. You're a two seed. How do you want your team to approach the tournament as a team that has the chip of an underdog or a team with the confidence of a team that's expected to do well? Well, we better. I think we better have that because. Uh, Both. How, how do you get them to do both, I guess? Well, I think we recognize that, uh, listen, they, 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 I told them the other day, hey, you can enjoy the, the season we had and, and the individual accolades, but, you know, when we come back here, it's we're, 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 our focus needs to be on moving forward. And, you know, Lori, I, I think there's no question that there, there are still plenty of questions about what we can be and do. And... Um, you know, I talk to people all the time that, um, you know, question, you know, if this group is going to be uh, a quick out in both tournaments. And because of our lack of this or our lack of that, or I mean, I just was on the phone with people the last couple of days who, who questioned that, who seemingly know basketball. So, um, you know, that's the reality. and We've got to continue to answer that. And um, I understand that. And hopefully our guys will play with the necessary um, chip that's required. And if not, you know, it's, it's going to show in our play. Coach, it's 
looks like Cam's had a couple of late nights at the gym this past week. He's looks oh, like he's. Uh, that's what it is. So? <laughs> is it social media? Oh, social okay. media. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> and it seems like he's really improved in the first couple of games from coming back from the suspension. Just how nice has that been? Just to get his kind of offensive productivity out of him the last couple of games. Well, we. He's another offensive weapon that we, we need. And it's no secret when we can have another guy make makes, or a couple other guys make shots, it really makes a difference for our offense. It's really makes it completely different, makes us a completely different team. So he needs to stay aggressive. He needs to stay ready. I'm glad he's, um, you know, I'm glad he's getting back uh, to where he's in a little bit of a rhythm now. And then kind of on more of a serious note here, um, one of your players said kind of some fathers said something kind of controversial this week. Dan Dockage said that Chris Farley is in fact not funny on one of his broadcasts this week. Are you afraid that, that is that going to affect Andrew's play time at all? Or are you afraid that that might be too ridiculous of a remark that other basketball fathers have said like LeVar Ball? I don't think that will affect our play one bit. <laughs> if it does, shame on us. But, uh, uh, you know, for my vote, I did think he was funny. <laughs> Jared, real quick. Uh, Chris, is, uh, because we have to play hypotheticals here, you sure. you're playing on Friday. If you play Penn State again, when you play a team for a third time and they've won the first two, how does it alter your approach? How much do you study the first two? Do you throw them away? How do you, how do, you do it? Well, obviously, it's a big if, right? Because right. we certainly could play Northwestern, and, and those guys present a lot of challenges as well. Um, but yeah, I think you just go back and you look and say, hey, can, can we do a better job as coaches preparing, uh, having a better game plan, having a better attack? Um, you know, they, they're very talented. I had, a, and I had a guy tell me this week that he thought they were maybe the most talented team in the league next to Michigan State. They're very talented. And, and I think that, that for us, they play well together too. For us, I just think we're going to have to try to dig in and, and as coaches look at some things um, that we need to do better to, to put our guys in, in better position. And we have to play harder, certainly harder than what we did uh, at their place, certainly, and then, and then at our place as well. So um, it's a tough balance because you're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We've had a very successful year, but you're also looking at, hey, you know, where there's some things we can do that we didn't, as coaches, you know, maybe didn't do a good enough job in those two games. And, um, you know, we're, we're searching for that, yet at the same time, we're also having a game plan ready for a good Northwestern team, too. So there's, there's that balance.